Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the third and final installment of How to Move. The close viewing, ses viewing sessions that are a collaborative effort from media art platform Lima and film theater Criterion, streaming live from the empty cinema room of Criterion. After having explored questions surrounding the public and private body and the narrativity of space, we will now investigate the public space as a political construct and ways to disrupt these structures. Again, with the help of four video works. Tonight's program is for free, but if you enjoyed it, you can donate. Something following the link in the description of the live stream. Now, Sandika Heisman will resume from here to take you through the works and the conversations. She's curator at Lima and will moderate the evening. Enjoy the program. And, and hello, hello everyone, everyone and, and welcome, welcome and thank, thank you young people for this lovely introduction and, and um, also a big, big welcome, welcome to, to Dalai Dijkstra, Dijkstra who is here with, with me in this spooky, spooky cinema, cinema theater. theater. Uh, welcome Dalai, Dalai. I, if, I, if I look here I see Dalai and, and he's also, also there. there. So we're, we're next, next to each other, other but, um, on separate, separate screens. screens so. So. On, on close, close on, on safe, safe distance, distance so to say. Um, um, yeah, it's already the last night of the series, and um, yeah, we're going to have another look into the collective Lima. Um, together with Luna and Jan Peter, we have selected four works, and there's one work by Dawa Dijkstra, and um, he's also my guest of the night. So we're going to um, talk a bit about everything that we're going to see and dive a bit into into the matter. And uh, yeah, as Jan Peter said, it's about like public space as a political construct. Um, there's four works that we're gonna watch. Uh, one by Mona Hatoum, one by Pilvi Takla, one by Wim Gijze, and one, as I said, by Douwe Dijkstra. Um, yeah, welcome Douwe. Uh, it's, it's hard to not look at you in real life, but just through the screen. Um, yeah, we're gonna watch your work um, at the end, but that's definitely a work that deals with um, public space. Um, maybe you can already tell a little bit about it that we know a bit like the way you deal with public space in, in your work. Um, so I don't know if that's, um, um, if you can already. Yeah, like... well this film that, that uh, <clears throat> this film is called Green Screen Gringo and it was actually the, well maybe not the very first time, but it was, uh, it felt at the time as the first time to do something in public space because I'm also uh, used, used to work in my studio, uh, you know the yeah the the artist studio that is um, that is my own uh, uh, my own personal space. So it's uh, it was it was for me something uh, new to move some of the techniques and and filmmaking uh, methods that I use to move them to the streets. And uh, so it's I, I don't know if it's if it's something that that is that uh, defines my work public space, but this this work is really about that. Um, yeah 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 was it was it uh, yeah we will see that you also use <clears throat> public space a lot as uh, a cinematographic space so to say so you really it, it almost looks like a mobile studio but was it harder to work in this like public space did, did you also encounter like um real like obstructions or so to say in in mm. in, in public space that you couldn't film or uh, things like that did you also feel that uh, well, I think I mean first it was harder because I I think I tried to to be in control as much as I as I am in my studio, but uh, um, and if you, I think if you try to make something that is very constructed and and aesthetically exactly the way you want it to be, like shooting fiction in public space, uh, that's very hard. But the great thing about it is that something happens because you interact with public space, um, which. And that makes it interesting, and and that could be or should be maybe the reason to even do something in public space. But I think so. I, I, when I started, I, I really wanted to be in control, and also there are I think a lot of images in the film that are very composed. And but I think the best parts of the film are the the little accidents or the things that just happened because I was there. 
And actually, I think in the films that we will watch before mine, there are, I mean, they're also just, um, uh, I wanted to say way better. Well, maybe way better <laughs> as well, but uh, more clear examples of just, yes. that is just about the interaction uh, of some some kind of performance or action in public space and, and, and the response to it. Yeah. yeah, it's funny because I wanted indeed to use this statement by you to make the bridge indeed to, <laughs> I think already the work that we're going to watch first, like the one by Mona Hatoum, uh, which is called Roadworks, in which you see that um, the very notion or the concept of the work is the way uh, that public space obstructs her or reacts to her. So yeah, I think maybe it would be nice to just like watch it and then afterwards we will like tune into that and how we, um, like how she uses this space. So I would say, Jose, are you ready? We are ready for the first work. So please enjoy Roadworks by Mona Hatoum.
Welcome back, everyone. I'm uh, still in the dark. <laughs> so if someone can turn on the lights, that would be nice. Um, yeah, there we are. We're here for real. Um, yeah, it's funny. Uh, when I was watching it, I thought it also had a lot to do with um, uh, uh, next last week's um, screening when we dealt with the performativity in the public space and of course she also deals with that but um, I think Hatoum brings this to another level um, the environment that she chooses she's in a predominantly black like working class neighborhood and she is kind of blending in by the way she's dressed but also of course going against um, the the, the the rules that are there by uh, tying her boots to her ankles and the boots also um, make it a more like politically oriented work since it's like Doc Martens and at that time they were like uh, like before in the I think 60s 70s they were mostly worn by policemen and postmen and then there was this skinhead period so there's also um, Yes, I think she also deals with that uh, issue by doing that. Um, but it's actually mostly fun to watch because people really um, pay attention to her. Dawa, I was like quite surprised that like people are even bothered or they, they find it very amusing, but there's lots of reactions mm. um, to her. And um, I don't know, I was kind of surprised and I was wondering, did you also like, uh, Feel that when you were working um, in public space, because you also have a very like uh, specific yeah. visual aesthetic, so people really see mm -hmm. that you're doing something odd there. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, what is what is odd? Uh, I mean, you, you at some point you have these two guys laughing, and, they, and I don't know. To me, I, I really see it as they're laughing away. You, you know, they're dealing with their feeling actually very uncomfortable by uh, witnessing something odd, you know? And it's, uh, I mean, wh uh, when I was in art school, I really enjoyed this. Uh, uh, we often went out, I mean, I studied in a very uh, conservative city in Kampen. There was a, a very, uh, an amazing art school in a, in a very beautiful, but also very old fashioned little city. And, um, we would go out to film, to make videos or uh, to do stuff in, in the public space, but people would be very uh, surprised or, or I mean, no, not surprised, but uh, uncomfortable. And, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, it's not just in Kampa. I think in my experience is there's almost anywhere when you do something uh, out of the ordinary. And I don't, I mean, sometimes it's very funny, but also often I, um, how to say uh, I, um, I it says so much about how um, you know how structured and predictable our behavior is maybe and that we don't have many uh, visual uh, rituals or um, in a way I, I made a film about this recently with with a friend of mine Jules Jules van Hulst, which is about that and also that when you make a film often you're doing something to construct an image which to a bystander may look super strange, but it's, I mean, I don't know, it also says a lot about society that is super easy. It's very easy to um, to make people uncomfortable with doing something uh, odd, you know, in public space. Yeah. Well, that's the thing here. Like it's such a minor difference from 
all the other people in the street like she just doesn't wear her boots properly so to say and directly like people are in yeah, maybe it's indeed this discomfort that is there and that like makes that either people are slightly annoyed or they um, make fun of it just out of discomfort and yeah but I, when i see it i i imagine a you know a world where uh, you know sometimes you just have to wear your shoes behind your feet because you have to i don't know do it for some symbolic reason or uh uh, because you're feeling sad or and that, and that yeah I don't know I would really like that to, this kind of practices to be part of the language but it's it's not you know I mean in public space everything has a practical uh, reason right or all the things that are art or they are framed or they are where you would expect them to be and um, yeah 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 it's 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 just you wish that these rules weren't so extremely strict that it's indeed not like not even doing something super theatrical but already like not properly wearing your shoes and that also makes me um uh, it makes me sad a little bit at all but also that, that you see that it, there's quite some things to overcome before we really have i don't want to get dark here but <laughs> before we have a society that is tolerant like already there's yeah. slight intolerance to not wearing your shoes properly like where where the hell should we <laughs> go i mean the from bigger there? Uh, the bigger the city right often the more tolerant i mean if you if you would do this in amsterdam i mean people would still uh look at you weirdly but would more they would kind of ignore ignore more be you know like whatever something odd is happening mm -hmm. again <laughs> In the streets, than if you would do this in a in a, maybe in a smaller community. But yeah, the the, the good like I had an early work. It's eighty five, but already before, like the video camera, I did. I, I I do believe it opened up a possibility to at least address this kind of uh, uh, structures. And um, uh, I think it's not a coincidence that she is a female, for instance. So there were many like female um, video makers at the time of Hatoum, but also before that they could show like, look, I'm just a person, like I'm just a woman in the street. And if I do the slightest thing that doesn't match with like uh, the rules. Um, yeah. So I think it is also uh, video is still a strong way to address uh, this. And I think that also um, is something we will come to in, in your work that it also can address like political issues of the time in, um, in a good way, but. Um, it's a beautiful image, the, the bare feet with the shoes in, behind it. I mean, you can, I think, interpret it in, I mean, you explained the context of the time, which I didn't know, but you can also interpret it in, in many ways. It's, a, I think, a very strong poetic image. I was thinking about the lo lockdown and, uh, and the distance, uh, and the pandemic, you know. Uh -huh. uh, Although it's from a completely different time. Yeah, I think we're doomed <laughs> to see every work in public space uh, now in a different uh, in different setting. Yeah. And, and it's beautiful as well, right? So you can interpret it in, uh, with uh, what is happening now. Absolutely, yeah. No, but it's just. Uh, but you're the art historian, so you you, you shouldn't. I shouldn't. No, 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 <laughs> I should no. see it in its original context. Well, that's also what I did. And you as an artist can then make it something more actual. So I think we're a, a good duo for the night. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, forgot to tell, but I think you all know there's the chat. So if you also want to participate and not only have the perspective of an art historian and an artist, please feel free to join and give your comments in the chat. I will read them and probably disagree with them. No, probably agree with them. Um, so yeah, I think it's time for the next one. Um, quite more recent, I think it's 2009. Uh, it's a work by Pilfi Takala, Real Snow White. Um, yeah, I think it also points out quite a lot, not about public space, but more the tension between maybe commercial space or commercialized space and public space. Um, I think we just watch it and then we'll discuss it afterwards. In it, if you're not having like 
urgent comments about the work that you want to say now, Dawa? No. No, let's watch no. it. So I do get to say again, play the tape. Enjoy. Like this? Yeah. 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 And, but it's dressed uh, like a snow white. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am. It's yeah. a Disneyland dress. That's a for us. Really? It, yeah. Because um, we don't know what you are going to do. Yeah. Maybe you can, it's going to be a bad thing. We, we are the people. We don't know. You know, yeah. people can, can make put their dress yeah. and, and do uh, the wrong thing. Yeah. And that's uh, good for, for the real character, you know. But so the, that's, yeah, that's but, cool. so, but I thought many people are dressed up. Yeah, yeah but uh, maybe for child, it's okay. Yeah. But uh, you are not Jew, so, you know, not the uh, same. Yeah. Uh, mm. Control, uh, control, uh, control. Possibility to envoyer en très fête, effectivement, sur le cours. Yeah, I'm nice this nice costume, now I can't think. It's Snow White, no? It's Snow White. It's Snow White. It's Snow White. It's Snow White. No, no, I'm not Snow White. It's 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 Snow White. So, 
So you have to, you have to do it until much like there's the real snow white and then I'm very much like the real snow white. Yeah. We got uh, to mix and to... Oh, I got a couple of them like that. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> Only for the moment they are waiting for the responsible. Yeah. She's coming. Yeah. And to uh, send the. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm not. Yeah. I didn't uh, think of the. Yeah. I thought the real snow is just a drawing. I'm alone. My friends think it's too expensive to come to get me. I didn't come. <laughs> Dan moet wel worst, nee? Anders zou je eerst winnen, hè? Nee. Can we take a picture? Met wat? Met wat? Met wat? I don't speak French, I'm sorry. Okay. You have to get changed. The others have not the right to be disguised. You guys? Yes. Everybody takes a photo. Mama, are you happy? Wait, you have to sit in the middle. And it's a big photo. Okay, so then Snow White doesn't go those things, and I'm going to go. Wat is het? Het is goed, het is goed. Kom. Is er een plek? Is er een plek? Is er een plek? Is er een Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm just right over there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, I have an echo. Echo. Ah. My sound was echoing since we're all in the same space with various microphones, but now it seems okay. 
Um, yeah, it, it's a, a wonderful work that in a way says it all. Like I, um, I almost don't know um, what to add to it. It's really like, it's a gem. Like she, she went there and she obviously knew what was going to happen, but it still only had to happen. Um, and that worked very well. And just for you to know, but probably that clear, it's all filmed with a hidden camera. Um, and I think the other works in the previous work, uh, but also in Taoist Dao, work there, maybe also what adds to the discomfort is the fact that there's a camera around, but here it's really just um, her image and her presence that makes um, such a fuzz. And I'm, to be honest, I'm mostly confused by the, by the parents because they, they directly start to interfere and also uh, add to this debate about like, she's not the real one. Oh, my child just thought she was the real one. And uh, um, yeah, it's fascinating how, um, how, is, how is space is so controlled by uh, a fictitious uh, character. I'm, I'm looking at Dao. Dao, what's your um, yeah, reaction I to this work? Super smart uh, piece. And, uh, and I think it's so hilarious that people want to have an autograph uh, of uh, Snow White. It's such a, <laughs> I know that it's really so absurd to get. But I, I was wondering, uh, I mean, the, in the park, I mean, they don't do that, right? I mean, you don't go to Snow White, ask for autograph. Or maybe, I, don't know. I think maybe, that's what they do. Maybe they do, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, because it's they all hilarious. they all brought their little notebooks, so yeah. they all probably have Mickey Mouse and Snow White. And it's beautiful this moment where the cameraman is very uh, sharp and fast when the guy says uh, it's okay. Some ki some kids are dressed up. That's okay, but adults cannot. And then he goes down with the camera, and then in the foreground immediately there is a girl dressed up as a princess as well. It's it's, it's such a I mean, it's, I think, I mean, none of it is staged, but he, uh, he anticipates beautifully, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, uh, really cool, uh, cool piece. And also, I mean, yeah, it just shows how these, these brands, you know, the, the these characters, they are such strong brands. It's crazy how, I mean, everybody knows the image of Snow White and you just have to dress up like one and then people want your, uh, want to autograph but now you have the it also reminds me of the i mean now i mean also at the time of this film you have these cosplay events uh i, I once i went to one with my uh, my nephews and uh, they are basically this whole mechanism of uh you know uh, of um dressing in the in a brand or in the celebrity or in a character that has this, like celebrity status uh it's all about that so these cosplay events it's it's young people dressing up like but the children then get the the disguise or so they will no be... it's it's all about all being snow white and uh -huh. being uh, i don't know spider-man and, and computer game characters and all this and then it's it's all legal and that's the point it's like a theme park full of amateur and then you can admire each other's costumes and and then they take pictures together. And I also, I, I also saw the, like also my nephew, he went there and he's, he's a, well, he's just a, uh, he was a 18 year old at the time, I think 18 year old boy. And then you dress up as a, as a famous character and suddenly everyone wants to be in a, in the picture with you, you know? So you have this one day of experiencing, experiencing this uh, star status, but, uh, I, I mean, this is a different take on, on that, but um, yeah. here it's illegal and because uh, Disney wants, you know, has, has the monopoly on this character, but you also have these events where it's the other, where it's uh, completely the other way around, actually. Yeah, but what also interests me is that like these children also dress up, but as soon as an adult does it, they think it's the, the real Snow White. So there's this weird, yeah. weird conception of it, like that they... I don't even know what they what they think because indeed she also said. But I thought the real white, uh, real uh, Snow White was a drawing, and children also probably know Snow White from the cartoon. But they still like once they see it, it's. Um... But I think immediately there are some adults who think who understand like maybe it's a fake Snow White because she's not from the park, and they value the real Snow White over like. You know they want to meet they're going to disneyland to paying expensive ticket to see the the real one so they immediately they're 
like in the first minute of the video, you hear someone say, is this real Snow White? Yeah. And I mean, if you would ask this person, they will understand they want the real, like the, the official Disney one, right? That's, yeah. So that's, that's more... Yeah, but uh, that's also the weird thing of commercialism that in a way, parents just pay for... I mean, they succeeded in... Uh, in uh, making the these people feel that it's that they want the real snow white instead of dressing up as a cheap uh rip off at home you know you could also do that and have as much fun maybe but you want to have the real one yeah but yeah but you also see that for the children it doesn't make a difference like if there's one outside of the cage that's already like yeah, yeah. good enough so yeah. and yeah but yeah it's interesting uh, also to see how far like a commercialized space can have like its influence and that even outside of the park there's a sort of yeah, it's super powerful it's yeah. super creepy yeah. yeah i even actually uh, saw so i think it's maybe even a glo more global thing i saw a winnie the pooh got arrested in just in a village somewhere mm -hmm. so uh, and now that's like years ago i think i even still was a child but that like i also wonder what like if there's also this like if it's just not allowed to disguise or that there's also sort of like that there must not be a commercial like motivation behind but um there is an amazing uh, documentary about uh, copyrights uh, but i don't know the title maybe you do do you know it but it's it's about a, a part of it is disney suing uh kindergartens or childcare uh, places because they painted Donald Duck or Winnie the Pooh on the on the windows like they always do and mm -hmm. then they're they're getting sued uh, by Disney for not having the rights of the image and then it's it's um wow. it's a crazy film that shows uh, that these yeah these companies they really go pretty far but I really love to see a, a bad a really badly drawn Donald Duck on a on like a, a wall somewhere on schools I love this kind of characters the thing is how badly does it have to be drawn to not be a copy anymore and that's also a bit what she hints on like how much do i have to remove of my costume to not be snow white anymore so there's also yeah. this super interesting question i also thought of uh, oliver larik's work um that is also in the lima collection but that's more about like uh, original and copy but he also shows excerpts of uh, disney films but in which they um copy them uh, copy themselves so there's like uh, a certain uh, I think it's a sort of Mickey Mouse and then there's exactly the same Mickey Mouse in another cartoon but then it's like uh, Peter Pan or so mm. it's so interesting so that he also accuses them of copy like <laughs> uh, copying themselves and then it's themselves. yeah but as soon as someone else does it it uh, then the, you'll have to pay for it or just remove it um the bridge the next work is not at all about disney but it is about um the claim of a truth and also the 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 the, the role that um the image or or uh, the documentation of an image plays in it so that sort of vague terms but we're going to make quite a, a giant leap uh, to win Geis's work the earliest think work from this series it's a 71 gem it's two minutes and i think uh, there's nothing i have to say at forehand and i'm just gonna let you all experience it and um, we'll be back in two minutes so here's dim Geise. jose play the video
yes, this was the exchange of the names of the cities of Rotterdam and The Hague. Um, but he didn't put the name Rotterdam at The Hague. No, I think it's, no, no, it's part, it's part of a series of mistakes, as he calls it. So there's a, a lot of short videos in which he also, I think he has the map of France and then puts Paris down, down below. So there's a lot of like um, confusion in uh, geographical errors and naming, but I don't think he did it the other way around. Hmm. But I also think it would have been harder the other way around to like, since the skyline of Rotterdam is so, I mean, you need to see it directly what it is to, to understand the work. So I think the other way around would have maybe been less striking um, mm. to do, but um, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just so brilliant. Um, and there's a lot to, to unravel from it. And um, yeah, of course it's about like uh, what defines this space. And I even thought back of the first uh, screening in the series when I was with um, uh, Eva von Beckham and Esther Polak because she, or they, I mean, she, Esther and he, Eva, um, think about public space as a space that, or a city, for instance, that is more than uh, the buildings that are there. It's about like people interacting with it, with it that makes a city a city. Um, and now, um, yeah, Wim Gijs also puts that up a challenge. Like, is it a city because it is named a certain way? And if I name it differently, who claims the name of a city? And uh, I even went a bit like crazy when I watched it that I thought it's also um, now more and more a political issue, this naming in, in, in the sense, like, do we want to, but like, I don't think we should go there, but do we want to um, erase or like, uh, certain names from streets because it's named after people that like um, were part of like uh, uh, a colonial history that we don't want longer like um, feel comfortable with but that goes further but there I think there's a lot of like uh, politics in in naming and claiming um, but maybe that is a bit too political uh, I don't know how you see this work Dawa uh, well what what I really like about it is that uh, the whole idea of the film, where you can explain it in one sentence, which is also the title of the film. So then you have this slide, and then basically, you know, such a, it's so straightforward uh, that you can explain it in just the title, and then exactly what is the title happens after. But then still, that's what I what I like is that still seeing the idea that you can already imagine by yourself just seeing it still um, evokes uh, a lot of extra uh, thoughts at least for me so you you know it's it's so it's very funny like you know it's obviously not true you're seeing Rotterdam you see the sign and uh, with this huge hammer but uh, I don't know just seeing that seeing the image of this uh, maybe even like silly joke and and uh, watching it for two minutes that that makes it uh you know simple as it is it, it, it it's uh, it's it's important to to look at this image for for two minutes yeah because but then then you start thinking and then and then it becomes so much more i mean like the, the things you you mentioned although i was thinking maybe about other things but i yeah that's what i really like about it but it's it's, it's so simple yeah it's just the idea yeah but yeah I, I was also wondering because i it it also makes me laugh just the way he does it that there's like it's a one taker there's a sort of clumsiness there's this theatrical big like hammer that he uses it, it uses so I, I i i don't know if it's also his theatrical performance that is done so well or, or is it just could it have could it have been any like act and it would also be have been as funny or so i don't i don't know um but, but it's always worthwhile seeing the two minutes. That's for sure. Like, um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. And there's, yeah, there's also like this truth claim. I think also of the um, um, uh, of the video image, so to say, or television. It's a super early work, but I, I think he already saw 
uh, in a super clever and funny way, the, the manipulative aspects of um, uh, video recording, um, so to say. And I think that's also why I choose it in regards to your work, um, mm -hmm. because it, it's two completely different works, of, for sure. But there is uh, this having an idea and also fully what you're doing. So it's um, the concept and the methods are completely intertwined. So there's uh, showing what you're um, doing, but by that showing uh, a sort of uh, manipulation and a manipulation that you still in one way or another start to believe or you know, I don't know how to say it. So this tension field between fake and real. Uh, oh wait, I see also a question by Luna. Um, and she was wondering if the film has a VHS quality because it was shot. Um, no, I think it was shot on uh, videotape. But I'm now looking at uh, Jose, who is like, uh, take care of know. technique. If he knows, maybe if it was a, uh, it's it's shot on videotape, right? Not on film. Yeah. So it's. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a tape. I don't know which tape, um, but yes. But that's what you do at Lima, right? To restore films that were shot on eight millimeter and then put no. on VHS tape and then you don't have the film anymore. And then, I mean, it could have been in that order, right? Sometimes you have the film maybe that was shot on film. Absolutely, yeah, because tape. like the early days of um, uh, television broadcast, that still needed to be on a 35 millimeter um, film. So we have works that were made for tele uh, are like video works, but still mm -hmm. are shot on. But we don't like preserve film, but we do preserve tape. And then uh, we digitize tape and we'll make it play on your computer screen. Of course, the, the, it's a digitized file for sure um but yeah indeed there's also uh works that were originally shot on film but mostly um video works um but yeah i think i was interrupting your stream of thought with my uh, technical question no no i no. wasn't i wasn't um what do you think is it uh, green screen gringo time already yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is. It's unavoidable. Um, yeah, any any comments before? Well, I I mean, I uh, of course, in my head, I'm comparing uh, the different films and also to my work. And I think a big difference is that uh, at, at least uh, the, la the last two films, you know, they have this very clear, I think, uh, idea by the by the filmmaker or a very clear question that they want to uh, provoke um, with doing this, this performance or action in, in public space. And in that sense, I think my work is also very different or at least the process because the, the um, I think the meaning or the meaning I try to put in the film and also the conceptual part of it, they really uh, came during the process of filming, although I did have some ideas, some, of course, some uh, some ideas before starting, but they really changed. And it's a, it's a, compared to all the other films, I collected, I think, a lot of different footages and, and, and tried, you know, to work to go from there. But I think in that sense, it's so, it's so different as well. And it can also kind of, well, not, you know, Jealous is not the right word, but uh, you know I can envy the the simplicity sometimes of this, this conceptual simplicity of the of the of, of other works like like the ones we saw here. I mean they're not simple, but they're they're very intelligent and deep. But the idea or the execution is very very simple, and I often have this very complex. Uh, you know, detour <laughs> to get there. <laughs> but here, like the yeah. work that we're going to watch is uh, made during a residency in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yeah. And I, I think that's also part, like you arrived in a city that you didn't know. And we also see 
uh, a city through your eyes, like you're discovering it with us, yeah, so to yeah, say. Yeah. So in that sense, it doesn't have like it's not a space that you were familiar with. Like no, but you could you could walk around in a city for two months and then yeah. observe and then make something. You know, it's exactly this. But uh, I collected and collected and collected, and then from there I, I created something. Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah, but we'll talk of it after. I think that's also. Um, in a way, the core of your work that you always take us with you on the way you were like mm -hmm. you have been making it, and that's also yeah. the that it is not one like conceptual seed, so to say, but we see the entire process and the process of the making. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think before we get to that, we just like make sure we're on the same page as the audience. So green screen, gringo time. I would say, yeah. just say, play the tape even if it's not a tape. Bom dia, São Paulo. Bom dia. Vocês estão prontos? É um assunto importantíssimo, é um assunto essencial. Tem um eco. Turn the leaves. 
Felipe, deixe seu recado. Hi man, uh, I'm sorry to take a little bit to to answer you. The situation here is a bit complicated, as I told you. And the strangest thing is that everything seems normal. Uh, I, I don't know. I, we don't seem to have uh, enough strength to change the situation. But the news are are very sad. So, we are all trying to understand what's happening. Well, keep in touch, man. See you. Faces que me levam a você Como um pé de papel Só é bom quem vai pro céu Já disso eu não sei O meu lugar eu não guardo
Senado aprovou por 55 votos a favor e 22 contra o afastamento da presidente Dilma Rousseff da presidência da República por até 180 dias para ser julgada por crime de responsabilidade. Bom, em primeiro lugar, eu quero dizer que eu estou constrangido de participar dessa farsa em nome dos direitos da população LGBT, do povo negro exterminado nas periferias, dos trabalhadores da cultura, dos sem teto, dos sem terra. Eu volto não ao golpe e durmam com essa, canalhas! Correndo, 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 correndo para não perder o metrô das 18h15, para não dar esmola àquela criança, para não se perceber dentro do caos paulistano. A cidade de São Paulo com seus prédios imensos, com suas constelações, com suas farsas todas, dos prédios que cobrem o céu. Suas pontes que não ligam ninguém, a não ser os carros violentos. Correndo, 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 para não perder o ônibus, para não ser assaltado, para não perder o furto diário. Da paz, da esperança, da alegria. Quem assaltou nossa memória subterrânea? Há um assalto cotidiano e ele é reflexo da nossa incompreensão. Correndo, 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 tic-tac, tic-tac, tic-tac. Alguma coisa vai explodir. Explosão. Hi, man. Uh, I don't know if you know, but we have a a new president, a very disgusting one. The whole process is very well. It's it, it's bad. <laughs> Welcome to the program. I'm... Okay. Yeah. 
Jill Mart Rousseff has been suspended and taking her place as interim president is a man perhaps even more polarizing than her. Michelle Temer is seen as serving the interests of Brazil's business elite and despite calling for unity, he's appointed a cabinet made up entirely of white men. Lots for us to discuss today, but first... back we just traveled to Sao Paulo and we're now back in more familiar environment it's must also be tough for you to watch it that way to maybe want to go back to a place <laughs> that that looks so far away nowadays like since we almost don't even leave our houses anymore <laughs> yeah true yeah, I mean but it's yeah it's a lot of uh, mixed feelings mm. I mean I would love I, I would love to go back uh, and I will go back uh, sometime for sure but uh, also I mean so much happened uh, in Brazil since I made this film and I mean then they were talking about of course the their impeached uh, president Dilma was replaced by someone uh, uh, Michel Temer who was uh, hated by by many but uh, well, yeah, things didn't get have, better since. Yeah, no, yeah, no absolutely a, not. A president yeah. that is more famous uh, for being uh, for being bad for his country than uh, than Trump, even you know. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah. The, and then also the pandemic is is very tough in Brazil. Yeah. No, I don't uh, think you want to go to the Brazil of nowadays, but you might want to go back to this one. Even of course, there was a lot of political upheaval already at that time yeah. Yeah. but yeah there's a quote that of course also uh, um, looks different now in corona times but that's like I think the strangest thing is thing looks normal yeah. uh, and I think that's also what we have here nowadays but uh, was it like that because if you see the film you see indeed that there's a lot going on was it was this all uh happening really at the time that you were there you were really there at the time of the uh, impeachment and the process and uh, no uh okay. well it, it was already starting uh, uh when i was there uh, but then when i was editing the film back in uh, europe that's when um, dilma was impeached uh was really impeached and um so also the meaning of the film uh, or the political meaning of the film came 
Afterwards. I mean, it was already there, and 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 the the the, the streets were charged with this uh, with this uh, political conflict as well. And um, I mean, I think a lot of that's a big difference. I think there in Brazil is that uh, many of the uh, well issues that there are in society, and also the uh, segregation and the difference between. Uh, rich and poor, they are all very visible, and there are all the, the borders between and fences and gated communities, and uh, so all the different roles that people are in in this big uh, urban uh, landscape that is Sao Paulo, they are very, very physically visible. And uh, yeah, but, so I think. Uh, yeah, but you were already focusing on like indigenous people in the LGBTQ uh, community that were the ones that were going to like suffer the most from uh, the more right wing politics that would happen like under Tamar and, and yeah but that was not yeah. my uh, my intention or well okay. I mean you know, I did portray them because they uh, had um, a hard time but I mean some of it is uh, that's what I also explained before the film started is that I collected a lot of things and also collected a lot of things that I kind of knew that they would be of, of meaning to the film, but I didn't know in, in what way. And uh, also, for example, the connection I made between the, the, uh, the uh, 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 drag queen and um, Indian and the way they are. Um, I mean, I, I didn't think of this connection. I only made it later, but I both portrayed them, I think, for the same reasons that they show uh, with their appearance, they they make a statement, and uh, although the Indian also does it for touristic yeah. reasons, actually, I mean they 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 dress up when they protest to fight for their rights. They 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 show their traditional uh, and also for their own um, uh, important rituals or moments they have as a community as well, but also for for tourists. And actually, there was a. Uh, I thought of that it was a funny connection between the film we watched about Snow White at Disneyland. Uh, and in the film, you see this guy who's dressed up as Iron Man and he made this Iron Man suit out of cardboard and he's in the streets and he is uh, uh, collecting money from kids who want to be in a photo with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, But what is, what is, what I, I really uh what you see all over the place in brazil but you can also find this a lot in well i think anywhere except maybe in in what they call uh, the west is that these copyrights they are they are ignored fully you know and people steal and and there's fake disney stuff everywhere or bad uh, and i i don't know i it's kind of anarchy towards this copyright that is that i also uh, i also like it because then the, yeah, Disney isn't just. Uh, there's a lot of people making money from Disney characters that is not going to Disney yeah. at all. Yeah. But that's also the paradox because the 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 portrait you made of the city also makes it look like a like a free city. But of course, it's way more like ruled and uh, more like oppression going on than in the West. But um, maybe not for the copyright issues but for all the like the social structures it's so much more like ruled and regulated and like uh, polarized um, yeah but also i mean uh i don't know i sometimes it seems how to say like more honest or it shows its ugly face and its pure pretty face but it shows its face and i think sometimes i don't know some you know, it's 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 tricky to compare in the West and uh, other countries, whatever. But I think that uh, sometimes uh, here it's maybe well, it's 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 hidden. Uh, you know, it's hmm. it's less uh, obvious, but it's still there. The same issues are present here as well. Uh, although we like to think that that everything's fine. You know, yeah, and, no, it I mean, of course, different, but at the same time. Hmm. Uh, but there's uh, one thing that looks uh quite like the one of the main like uh recurring topics of the film is like representing the the underrepresented and the most symbolic uh gesture you make is like giving 
the Indian and the, the drag queen a place in the museum. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is also, uh, because that's really like, uh, I would say a hot topic here, but that's really like an urgent topic nowadays we're discussing, yeah. like who is represented in, um, in the museum. Is that something that is a topic of debate or, or is it just not there at all? What do you mean? And uh, so like the topic of that, there should be more uh, equal representation of society in uh, the art collections of museums. Well, yeah, I think it is a debate, and but also, I mean, you can see it in two different ways. I guess that you know you can, yeah, of course, that is that the the actual image of indigenous people or LGBT people is not represented in a museum because they show this. A romantic a colonial um, mm -hmm. view often I mean these old paintings in the museum they're all made by uh, by the uh, colonial uh, uh, by the colonists but also you can see it as the you know I'll be able to see them in the museum because they won't you know because they're disappearing you mean they're not on the street they're not. No, they are, but it's it's they are no. very uh, uh, threatened, you know the, the 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 indigenous and 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 what and I mean they are uh, hmm. disappearing. Yeah, but are there are they represented in uh, in these national collections? It, it didn't look like it, so they're just not there. Yeah, they are, but they are yeah. represented in the in the old. I mean, in old colonial way i mean yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. so just i mean that's it's also everywhere. not i mean there's more way more nuance to it than this but it's uh in in this specific museum the the uh which shows old paintings it is a an old colonial image a romantic image of the indian yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah what i what i like so much about it is what i mentioned already that you show that everything seems so uh open in your work or you, like you show um you show what you do and how you um make the tricks what's not make the tricks but yeah you see what i mean yeah like we see a green yeah. screen and like a green screen is almost never used as a, a visual visual element in um in a movie like what's and and you're really like uh, a green screen uh hero so to say like it always keeps on coming back in your work and i think in the in your work before like demontable you more take us um you more lead us so to say so there's first a lot of um uh, the visuals going on uh, making use of the green screen but we don't see it and then slowly you start to reveal uh, the process of making but here you choose to directly uh from the, almost the first shot show what you're uh, what mm -hmm. you're doing like is that I don't know how that, how yeah I mean I I, uh, I I use it to 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 show my perspective as a filmmaker and um, um, I mean in this film it almost uh, almost also becomes a game or you, you know you can find everything that I reused in shots that are fake you can also find them uh, in front of the green screen uh, so you can you can see the puzzle that I made, yeah. um, but I also try to use it to to show my uh, my perspective as a, as a gringo as a as a, a foreigner who is uh, not in his own um, um, space and uh, um, yeah I think I mean I. I like to to show this the, the the construction of the image, so you you can also um, uh, see what I'm doing and and, and perhaps uh, also see more of the meaning of of, of what I'm doing mm -hmm. instead of tricking yeah. someone. Yeah. I, I see. In the meantime, we have some uh, YouTube comments and questions, so I'm going to share them with you. First is uh, comments. I like the eclectic mix and switches of radio images, politics, and daily struggle. People being in the museum, in their home, interior, and on the street at the same time. Thanks for that. And then there's a question. I'm wondering how you feel your position while you were filmi filming there as an outsider. You were there in the frame directing scenes, but I'm curious if you got suggestions, ideas from people there. Oh, yeah. So how do you... 
um, yeah, there's many different, uh, there were many different situations and off, and sometimes I, I directed, um, things as well. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it was always, for me, it was also new, this, this, um, way of making a documentary and, um, and it is, uh, so I try to not direct the moment as much. So all the portraits, they are very straightforward and people were just doing what they were doing and, and, and the manipulation or the directing, uh, comes more from, from what I did in post in what I did in post-production. Um, for example, the guy who calls his wife to tell that he's being uh, filmed by, um, by me, it was totally, it just happened. So he, we were actually there to film. Uh, I was there with my uh, with the translator, and we were there to film the the guys selling CDs in the streets. Another example, by the way, of copyrights that are just yeah. uh, uh, totally ignored. But uh, uh, and then this guy came up to us like, "What are you filming? Oh, you should film me." Um, and then he he was directing himself. He he said, "I, I should do something. Maybe uh, I will call my wife." And then it was really <laughs> his own uh, idea of the moment um sometimes i there is an example of the, the the guy the boy um the music producer who is on his bed uh producing the music and well that is that is uh, so i met people in the streets and, and then i had a very short encounter and it was just a moment and and i asked them and then i often i just filmed them as it was in the in the situation except i put in the green screen but this producer it was someone who was friends of friends and I met him and I so it was more uh, you know I was really there to, at his home to film and then he actually he wasn't really doing this on his bed he had a table and this didn't look very interesting and then I asked to move it on the bed so that was kind of fake but also because there's a mirror on the left and then I thought it it the mirror kind of mirrored uh, in an unliteral sense it mirrored my green screen and but this is very staged. Uh, although, I mean, he, he's doing what he's doing, but the way I put him in the frame, it's it's a bit different than the rest of the film where I manipulated later. There I manipulated <laughs> in the moment. Um, and the museum is totally different because I didn't film. Uh, nobody knew I was filming what I was filming. So I, I was just pretending to be a tourist uh, filming uh, paintings and uh, um, and I was actually collecting uh, this footage to to use. I also didn't get permission to film in the museum, so the uh, so the only shot where you see so always when you see me with the green screen, so the feet and the thing, it's real. I'm there in the frame, except in the museum, because I wanted to be in the museum with my green screen in between paintings. But I didn't get permission or, I don't know, it, it would have taken months and then uh, my residency was already over. So I filmed myself on the blue screen with my green screen and then I put myself in the museum. So that's also very fake. Uh, you made yeah. things so layered. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very, it's many different uh, types of, types of, many different types of fake, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That could have been a good title as well. Yeah. Many different types of fake. Yeah. But in a way, also not fake at all, since you uh, almost like, except for this, maybe one little trick of you in yeah. being in a museum with your green screen, it's all like uh, real. Yeah. What what we what we see. Um, yeah, and I also like this uh, realness in the way you shot people and even the, the Maybe that's also because there's a scene on the beach, but it reminded me a bit of Rineke Dijkstra that you always mm -hmm. wait a little bit longer um, with the shot and that people like lose uh, character yeah. and show, uh, show show a bit of realness. So there's this yeah. uncomfortable poses and this, this beautiful, uh, yeah, I find them beautiful that you see them first in character, so to say, and then they loosen up when they think it's already over yeah. what you've been doing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the the I'm also the reference to Rinike Dijkstra was was very much on purpose, and um, but I think uh, what helped me was that I used a very small camera, that is also I mean nowadays a lot of photo cameras they are uh, 
pretty good at filming and I actually bought a, a film camera right before I started this project, but I, I didn't take it to the streets of Sao Paulo because it, it would have been just tricky by yourself. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's better to have a small, so I bought a, it's a Sony RX100. It's a very small camera. It's like a, the size of a pack of cigarettes. And um, uh, so you can just quickly put it away and then you're just uh, like anyone else. But uh, the, um, I mean, all the portraits are asked permission to film, but then you have this tiny photo camera on a tripod and it, and it really helps people to, I don't know, they're not intimidated by the camera and they also often acted like it was a photo, although I told them it was video, but it's... Um, Maybe that's also what you see indeed, that they, yeah. they hold the pots for a certain amount of time and then they think, oh, it's done. Yeah, yeah it really helps if, if your equipment is not uh, intimidate, intimidating. Uh, so they would just uh, relax, but it would also be uncomfortable because they thought like, mm, okay, you took the picture, I guess, and then they would look to the side or... And you have this and I will always keep get another 10 seconds because then nice um I think I want to start rounding it up but I'm actually curious because this already a while ago if you're uh currently working on something in, on which you can Tell us already a bit. Or yeah, yeah, hard? I'm I'm working on a documentary that I mean I worked on many different things since this film, but uh, I think now I'm I'm working on a on a new film that is kind of in line with this one, and it's uh, it's uh, a documentary about my neighbor, uh, my neighbor in my studio. So I have a studio with the green screen lights and and my 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 equipment, and next door. Um, is a guy who is exactly my age, but he's uh, he's an immigrant uh, from Somalia, and he had a uh, and he he always entered my studio, uh, or like he comes to chat, and then he's standing on my green screen and he's telling me about his life and and actually telling me like you should make a f film about my life, <laughs> and uh, for a while I thought like yeah okay that is uh, that is um, I don't know what to think about that, but. Um, now we're actually going to do it, uh, but it's more, it's a, it will be a film that is about our friendship and, uh, and the way we try to deal with his, uh, with his past. And it's about reenactment and um, yeah, so that's already a lot of, of information. And Fantastic, I hope to, yeah. And hope to finish it later, later this year. I was about to say, when will it be finished? This year. I don't know when it's finished, but I hope when it's finished. sometime this year. Just like, I just want to know when I can invite you back, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll keep us informed of how it's... Um, After lockdown. After lockdown yeah. in a real <laughs> cinema with people. Yeah, observe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, that was it for tonight. Thank you so much, Dawa, for being here in this uh, cinema room with me. And thanks to Luna, who's behind me also in the listen room and Jan Peter was also there but outside the frame. Um, it's been a wonderful, strange and fantastic experience to be in a cinema room uh, without people but still with the big screen. I hope you can all enjoy it soon, a real cinema. Um, that was it for the series. So thanks everyone. Thanks to Jose and Nina for taking care of technique. Um, Next week, I will be back, but not from Criterion. I will be at home again and um, engaging conversation with uh, Jeremy Bailey. He's the next artist of our Cultural Matters series. So that will be next week. But for now, thank you all so much and uh, see you soon. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>